Autoimmunity, Wikipedia article audio. Autoimmunity is the system of immune responses of an organism against its own healthy cells and tissues. Any disease that results from such an aberrant immune response is termed an autoimmune disease. Prominent examples include celiac disease, diabetes mellitus type 1, sarcoidosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, Chagrin's syndrome, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, Addison's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, and multiple sclerosis. Autoimmune diseases are very often treated with steroids. In the later 19th century it was believed that the immune system was unable to react against the body's own tissues. Paul Ehrlich, at the turn of the 20th century, proposed the concept of horror autotoxicus. Ehrlich later adjusted his theory to recognize the possibility of autoimmune tissue attacks, but believed certain innate protection mechanisms would prevent the autoimmune response from becoming pathological. History Low-level autoimmunity In 1904 this theory was challenged by the discovery of a substance in the serum of patients with paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria that reacted with red blood cells. During the following decades, a number of conditions could be linked to autoimmune responses. However, the authoritative status of Ehrlich's postulate hampered the understanding of these findings. Immunology became a biochemical rather than a clinical discipline. By the 1950s the modern understanding of autoantibodies and autoimmune diseases started to spread. More recently it has become accepted that autoimmune responses are an integral part of vertebrate immune systems, normally prevented from causing disease by the phenomenon of immunological tolerance to self-antigens. Autoimmunity should not be confused with alloimmunity. While a high level of autoimmunity is unhealthy, a low level of autoimmunity may actually be beneficial. Taking the experience of a beneficial factor in autoimmunity further, one might hypothesize with intent to prove that autoimmunity is always a self-defense mechanism of the mammal system to survive. The system does not randomly lose the ability to distinguish between self and non-self, the attack on cells may be the consequence of cycling metabolic processes necessary to keep the blood chemistry in homeostasis. Second, autoimmunity may have a role in allowing a rapid immune response in the early stages of an infection when the availability of foreign antigens limits the response. In their study, Stefanova et al. injected an anti-MHC class II antibody into mice expressing a single type of MHC class II molecule to temporarily prevent CD4 plus T cell MHC interaction. Naive CD4 plus T cells recovered from these mice 36 hours post anti MHC administration showed decreased responsiveness to the antigen pigeon cytochrome C peptide, as determined by ZAP70 phosphorylation, proliferation, and interleukin 2 production. Thus Stefanova ETAL demonstrated that self-MHC recognition maintains the responsiveness of CD4 plus T cells when foreign antigens are absent. This idea of autoimmunity is conceptually similar to play fighting. The play fighting of young cubs may result in a few scratches or scars, but is beneficial in the long term as it primes the young cub for proper fights in the future. Pioneering work by Noel Rose and Ernst Whiteybsky in New York, and Royd and Doniak at University College London provided clear evidence that, at least in terms of antibody-producing B cells, diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and thyrotoxicosis are associated with loss of immunological tolerance, 
which is the ability of an individual to ignore self, while reacting to non-self. This breakage leads to the immune system's mounting an effective and specific immune response against self-determinants. The exact genesis of immunological tolerance is still elusive, but several theories have been proposed since the mid-20th century to explain its origin. Immunological Tolerance Three hypotheses have gained widespread attention among immunologists. In addition, two other theories are under intense investigation. Immunodeficiency and Autoimmunity Tolerance can also be differentiated into central and peripheral tolerance, on whether or not the above stated checking mechanisms operate in the central lymphoid organs or the peripheral lymphoid organs. It must be emphasized that these theories are not mutually exclusive, and evidence has been mounting suggesting that all of these mechanisms may actively contribute to vertebrate immunological tolerance. A puzzling feature of the documented loss of tolerance seen in spontaneous human autoimmunity is that it is almost entirely restricted to the autoantibody responses produced by B lymphocytes. Loss of tolerance by T cells has been extremely hard to demonstrate, and where there is evidence for an abnormal T cell response it is usually not to the antigen recognized by autoantibodies. Thus, in rheumatoid arthritis there are autoantibodies to IgGFC but apparently no corresponding T cell response. In systemic lupus there are autoantibodies to DNA, which cannot evoke a T cell response, and limited evidence for T cell responses implicates nucleoprotein antigens. In celiac disease there are autoantibodies to tissue transglutaminase but the T-cell response is to the foreign protein gliadin. This disparity has led to the idea that human autoimmune disease is in most cases based on a loss of B-cell tolerance which makes use of normal T-cell responses to foreign antigens in a variety of aberrant ways. There are a large number of immunodeficiency syndromes that present clinical and laboratory characteristics of autoimmunity. The decreased ability of the immune system to clear infections in these patients may be responsible for causing autoimmunity through perpetual immune system activation. Genetic Factors one example is common variable immunodeficiency where multiple autoimmune diseases are seen e.g., inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune thrombocytopenia, and autoimmune thyroid disease. Sex Familial hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, an autosomal recessive primary immunodeficiency, is another example. Pancytopenia, rashes, Swollen lymph nodes and enlargement of the liver and spleen are commonly seen in such individuals. Presence of multiple uncleared viral infections due to lack of perforin are thought to be responsible. Environmental factors In addition to chronic and slash or recurrent infections many autoimmune diseases including arthritis, Autoimmune hemolytic anemia, scleroderma, and type 1 diabetes mellitus are also seen in X-linked A-gamma globulinemia. Recurrent bacterial and fungal infections and chronic inflammation of the gut and lungs are seen in chronic granulomatous disease as well. CGD is a caused by decreased production of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate oxidase by neutrophils. Hypomorphic RAG mutations are seen in patients with midline granulomatous disease, an autoimmune disorder that is commonly seen in patients with granulomatosis with polyangiitis and NK-T cell lymphomas. Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome patients also present with eczema, autoimmune manifestations, recurrent bacterial infections and lymphoma. Pathogenesis of Autoimmunity
In autoimmune polyendocrinopathy candidiasis ectodermal dystrophy also autoimmunity and infections coexist. Organ-specific autoimmune manifestations and chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. Finally, IgA deficiency is also sometimes associated with the development of autoimmune and atopic phenomena. Certain individuals are genetically susceptible to developing autoimmune diseases. This susceptibility is associated with multiple genes plus other risk factors. Genetically predisposed individuals do not always develop autoimmune diseases. Three main sets of genes are suspected in many autoimmune diseases. These genes are related to The first two, which are involved in the recognition of antigens, are inherently variable and susceptible to recombination. These variations enable the immune system to respond to a very wide variety of invaders, but may also give rise to lymphocytes capable of self-reactivity. Classification Scientists such as Hugh McDevitt, G. Nepom, J. Bell and J. Todd have also provided strong evidence to suggest that certain MHC class II allotypes are strongly correlated with Diagnosis Fewer correlations exist with MHC class I molecules. The most notable and consistent is the association between HLA-B27 and spondylarthropathies like ankylosing spondylitis and reactive arthritis. Correlations may exist between polymorphisms within class II MHC promoters and autoimmune disease. Clonal deletion theory, proposed by Burnett, according to which self-reactive lymphoid cells are destroyed during the development of the immune system in an individual. For their work Frank M. Burnett and Peter B. Medawar were awarded the 1960 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discovery of acquired immunological tolerance. Clonal energy theory, proposed by Nossel, in which self-reactive T or B cells become inactivated in the normal individual and cannot amplify the immune response, idiotype network theory, proposed by Jern, wherein a network of antibodies capable of neutralizing self-reactive antibodies exists naturally within the body. The contributions of genes outside the MHC complex remain the subject of research, in animal models of disease, and in patients. Recently, PTPN22 has been associated with multiple autoimmune diseases including type I diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Graves' disease, Addison's disease, myasthenia gravis, vitiligo, systemic sclerosis juvenile idiopathic arthritis, and psoriatic arthritis. Clonal ignorance theory, according to which autoreactive T-cells that are not represented in the thymus will mature and migrate to the periphery, where they will not encounter the appropriate antigen because it is inaccessible tissues. Consequently, autoreactive B-cells, that escape deletion, cannot find the antigen or the specific helper T-cell, suppressor population or regulatory T-cell theory, wherein regulatory T-lymphocytes function to prevent, downregulate, or limit autoaggressive immune responses in the immune system. A person's sex also seems to have some role in the development of autoimmunity, that is, most autoimmune diseases are sex-related. Nearly 75% of the more than 23.5 million Americans who suffer from autoimmune disease are women, although it is less frequently acknowledged that millions of men also suffer from these diseases. According to the American Autoimmune Related Diseases Association, autoimmune diseases that develop in men tend to be more severe. A few autoimmune diseases that men are just as or more likely to develop as women include, ankylosing spondylitis, 
type 1 diabetes mellitus, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, Crohn's disease, primary sclerosing cholangitis and psoriasis. Treatments Nutrition and autoimmunity The reasons for the sex role in autoimmunity vary. Women appear to generally mount larger inflammatory responses than men when their immune systems are triggered, increasing the risk of autoimmunity. Involvement of sex steroids is indicated by that many autoimmune diseases tend to fluctuate in accordance with hormonal changes, for example, during pregnancy, in the menstrual cycle, or when using oral contraception. A history of pregnancy also appears to leave a persistent increased risk for autoimmune disease. It has been suggested that the slight, direct exchange of cells between mothers and their children during pregnancy may induce autoimmunity. This would tip the gender balance in the direction of the female. Immunoglobulins, T-cell receptors, the major histocompatibility complexes. Another theory suggests the female high tendency to get autoimmunity is due to an imbalanced X chromosome inactivation. The X inactivation skew theory, proposed by Princeton University's Jeff Stewart, has recently been confirmed experimentally in scleroderma and autoimmune thyroiditis. Other complex X-linked genetic susceptibility mechanisms are proposed and under investigation. An interesting inverse relationship exists between infectious diseases and autoimmune diseases. In areas where multiple infectious diseases are endemic, autoimmune diseases are quite rarely seen. The reverse, to some extent, seems to hold true. The hygiene hypothesis attributes these correlations to the immune-manipulating strategies of pathogens. While such an observation has been variously termed as spurious and ineffective, according to some studies, parasite infection is associated with reduced activity of autoimmune disease. The putative mechanism is that the parasite attenuates the host immune response in order to protect itself. This may provide a serendipitous benefit to a host that also suffers from autoimmune disease. The details of parasite immune modulation are not yet known, but may include secretion of anti-inflammatory agents or interference with the host immune signaling. HLA-DR2 is strongly positively correlated with systemic lupus erythematosus, narcolepsy, and multiple sclerosis, and negatively correlated with DM type 1. HLA-DR3 is correlated strongly with Chagrin's syndrome, myasthenia gravis, SLE, and DM type 1. HLA-DR4 is correlated with the genesis of rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes mellitus, and pemphigus vulgaris. A paradoxical observation has been the strong association of certain microbial organisms with autoimmune diseases. For example, Klebsiella pneumoniae and Coxsackie virus B have been strongly correlated with ankylosing spondylitis and diabetes mellitus type 1, respectively. This has been explained by the tendency of the infecting organism to produce superantigens that are capable of polyclonal activation of B lymphocytes, and production of large amounts of antibodies of varying specificities some of which may be self-reactive. Certain chemical agents and drugs can also be associated with the genesis of autoimmune conditions, or conditions that simulate autoimmune diseases. The most striking of these is the drug-induced lupus erythematosus. Usually, withdrawal of the offending drug cures the symptoms in a patient. Cigarette smoking is now established as a major risk factor for both incidence and severity of rheumatoid arthritis. This may relate to abnormal citrullination of proteins, since the effects of smoking correlate with the presence of antibodies to citrullinated peptides. <laughs>
several mechanisms are thought to be operative in the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases, against a backdrop of genetic predisposition and environmental modulation. It is beyond the scope of this article to discuss each of these mechanisms exhaustively, but a summary of some of the important mechanisms have been described. The roles of specialized immunoregulatory cell types, such as regulatory T cells, NK T cells, gamma delta T cells in the pathogenesis of autoimmune disease are under investigation. Autoimmune diseases can be broadly divided into systemic and organ specific or localized autoimmune disorders, depending on the principal clinicopathologic features of each disease. Using the traditional organ-specific and non-organ-specific classification scheme, many diseases have been lumped together under the autoimmune disease umbrella. However, many chronic inflammatory human disorders lack the telltale associations of B and T cell-driven immunopathology. In the last decade it has been firmly established that tissue inflammation against self does not necessarily rely on abnormal T and B cell responses. This has led to the recent proposal that the spectrum of autoimmunity should be viewed along an immunological disease continuum, with classical autoimmune diseases at one extreme and diseases driven by the innate immune system at the other extreme. Within this scheme, the full spectrum of autoimmunity can be included. Many common human autoimmune diseases can be seen to have a substantial innate immune-mediated immunopathology using this new scheme. This new classification scheme has implications for understanding disease mechanisms and for therapy development. Diagnosis of autoimmune disorders largely rests on accurate history and physical examination of the patient, and high index of suspicion against a backdrop of certain abnormalities in routine laboratory tests. In several systemic disorders, serological assays which can detect specific autoantibodies can be employed. Localized disorders are best diagnosed by immunofluorescence of biopsy specimens. Autoantibodies are used to diagnose many autoimmune diseases. The levels of autoantibodies are measured to determine the progress of the disease. Treatments for autoimmune disease have traditionally been immunosuppressive, anti-inflammatory, or palliative. Managing inflammation is critical in autoimmune diseases. Non-immunological therapies, such as hormone replacement in Hashimoto's thyroiditis or type 1 diabetes mellitus treat outcomes of the autoaggressive response, thus these are palliative treatments. Dietary manipulation limits the severity of celiac disease. Steroidal or NSAID treatment limits inflammatory symptoms of many diseases. IVIG is used for CIDP and GBS. Specific immunomodulatory therapies, such as the TNF-alpha antagonists, the B-cell depleting agent rituximab, the anti-IL-6 receptor tocilizumab and the costimulation blocker abatacept have been shown to be useful in treating RA. Some of these immunotherapies may be associated with increased risk of adverse effects, such as susceptibility to infection. Helminthic therapy is an experimental approach that involves inoculation of the patient with specific parasitic intestinal nematodes. There are currently two closely related treatments available, inoculation with either Nicatera americanus, commonly known as hookworms, or Trichurus suis ova, commonly known as pig whipworm eggs. T-cell vaccination is also being explored as a possible future therapy for autoimmune disorders. Vitamin D slash sunlight Omega-3 fatty acids Probiotics slash microflora Antioxidants <laughs>
T-cell bypass A normal immune system requires the activation of B-cells by T-cells before the former can undergo differentiation into plasma B-cells and subsequently produce antibodies in large quantities. This requirement of a T-cell can be bypassed in rare instances, such as infection by organisms producing superantigens, which are capable of initiating polyclonal activation of B-cells or even of T-cells, by directly binding to the beta subunit of T-cell receptors in a nonspecific fashion, T-cell B-cell discordance and normal immune response is assumed to involve B and T-cell responses to the same antigen, even if we know that B-cells and T-cells recognize very different things, conformations. On the surface of a molecule for B cells and pre processed peptide fragments of proteins for T cells. However, there is nothing as far as we know that requires this. All that is required is that a B cell recognizing antigen X endocytoses and processes a protein Y and presents it to a T cell. Rusnik and Lanzavecchia showed that B cells recognizing IGV could get help from any T cell responding to an antigen CO endocytosed with IgG by the B cell as part of an immune complex. In celiac disease it seems likely that B cells recognizing tissue transglutamine are helped by T cells recognizing gliadin, Aberrant B cell receptor mediated feedback A feature of human autoimmune disease is that it is largely restricted to a small group of antigens, several of which have known signaling roles in the immune response. This fact gave rise to the idea that spontaneous autoimmunity may result when the binding of antibody to certain antigens leads to aberrant signals being fed back to parent B cells through membrane bound ligands. These ligands include B cell receptor, IgG FC receptors, CD21, which binds complement C3D, toll like receptors 9 and 7, and PNAR. More indirect aberrant activation of B cells can also be envisaged with autoantibodies to acetylcholine receptor and hormone and hormone binding proteins. Together with the concept of T-cell B-cell discordance this idea forms the basis of the hypothesis of self-perpetuating autoreactive B-cells. Autoreactive B-cells and spontaneous autoimmunity are seen as surviving because of subversion both of the T-cell help pathway and of the feedback signal through B-cell receptor, thereby overcoming the negative signals responsible for B-cell self-tolerance without necessarily requiring loss of T-cell self-tolerance, molecular mimicry and exogenous antigen may share structural similarities with certain host antigens, thus, any antibody produced against this antigen can also, in theory, bind to the host antigens, and amplify the immune response. The idea of molecular mimicry arose in the context of rheumatic fever, which follows infection with group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Although rheumatic fever has been attributed to molecular mimicry for half a century no antigen has been formally identified. Moreover, the complex tissue distribution of the disease argues against a cardiac-specific antigen. It remains entirely possible that the disease is due to e.g. an unusual interaction between immune complexes, complement components, and endothelium, idiotype cross-reaction idiotypes are antigenic epitopes found in the antigen-binding portion of the immunoglobulin molecule. Plots and Old Stone presented evidence that autoimmunity can arise as a result of a cross-reaction between the idiotype on an antiviral antibody and a host cell receptor for the virus in question. In this case, the host cell receptor is envisioned as an internal image of the virus, and the anti-idiotype antibodies can react with the host cells. Cytokine dysregulation cytokines have been recently divided into two groups according to the population of cells whose functions they promote, helper T cells type 1 or type 2. The second category of cytokines, 
which include IL-4, IL-10, and TGF-beta, seem to have a role in prevention of exaggeration of pro-inflammatory immune responses, dendritic cell apoptosis immune system cells called dendritic cells present antigens to active lymphocytes. Dendritic cells that are defective in apoptosis can lead to inappropriate systemic lymphocyte activation and consequent decline in self-tolerance, epitope spreading or epitope drift when the immune reaction changes from targeting the primary epitope to also targeting other epitopes. In contrast to molecular mimicry, the other epitopes need not be structurally similar to the primary one epitope modification or cryptic epitope exposure this mechanism of autoimmune disease is unique in that it does not result from a defect in the hematopoietic system instead disease results from the exposure of cryptic and glycan linkages common to lower eukaryotes and prokaryotes on the glycoproteins of mammalian non-hematopoietic cells and organs this exposure of phylogenically primitive glycans activates one or more mammalian innate immune cell receptors to induce a chronic sterile inflammatory state in the presence of chronic and inflammatory cell damage the adaptive immune system is recruited and self-tolerance is lost with increased autoantibody production. In this form of the disease, the absence of lymphocytes can accelerate organ damage, and intravenous IgG administration can be therapeutic. Although this route to autoimmune disease may underlie various degenerative disease states, no diagnostics for this disease mechanism exist at present and thus its role in human autoimmunity is currently unknown. Systemic autoimmune diseases include SLE, Sjogren's syndrome, sarcoidosis, scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, cryoglobulemic vasculitis, and dermatomyositis. These conditions tend to be associated with autoantibodies to antigens which are not tissue-specific. Thus although polymyositis is more or less tissue-specific in presentation, it may be included in this group because the autoantigens are often ubiquitous tRNA synthetases, local syndromes which affect a specific organ or tissue, endocrinologic, diabetes mellitus type 1, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Addison's disease, gastrointestinal, celiac disease. Crohn's disease, pernicious anemia, dermatologic, pemphigus vulgaris, vitiligo, hematologic, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, idiopathic, thrombocytopenic purpura, neurological, multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, encephalitis.